Hello, and thank you for joining us here on The Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by my esteemed colleague, my partner in crime. Really, the best way to describe this person is my everything. It's that Eric Delala. What's good, Phil? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah, uh, it feels like a long time since we've been in here. It does feel like many moons. The Thursday night game against the Colts, that was like last season or what? what it, it feels like a distant memory. Yeah. Well, we're, we're moving on, though. We are. You know, there's no other choice. The Broncos are two and three, and now they're heading on the road. That can't if, be right. Yeah, that is right. Ooh. That's not good. No. They got to get it turned around. Okay, got Eric. it. Get it turned around. They're heading on the road, and they're facing the Los Angeles Chargers. Another division opponent. They got loss in their name. Yeah, loss. Angeles. Yeah, yeah loss. That's Angeles. probably a good sign, right? Yeah. You would think that could be a good thing for the Broncos. Uh, we should also mention that joining us here in studio, the one and only Ben Swanson. If Eric's your everything, am I your nothing? No, you're also my everything. Wow. Well, Two everything. Doesn't make sense. It's flannel season for Ben Swanson. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, no. just kind of a, a little mighty lumberjack over there. <laughs> the colors are changing outside and inside. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's that time of year. And it's yeah. QZ season right. for me, Phil. Yeah. Uh, you making some good soup? Yes. Yeah, what else are you doing? Uh, yeah. How are your paper enjoying towels? Enjoying the leaves. You're, yep. Good paper towels. <laughs> They're very brawny. Yeah. Not, a Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But they could be if they wanted to be. Kind of a weird sponsor, but yeah, we're up for it. It'd be a little bit strange, huh? To clean up all the messes that Phil makes. No, do I make cannot. a lot of mess? Yeah, just metaphorically. Oh, yeah, got it. With my words. Yeah, exactly. I see. I you. see. Whoops. Hey, oh, Erica, I think on this episode uh, we should talk a little bit about Russell Wilson. Ooh. Yeah, he uh, he put that loss on the Colts on himself. He did. He said, "That's on me. I let this team down." I want to know, Eric. What is the recipe? I see what you did there. To getting him back on track. Right. You know what I mean? Because I think it seems like maybe they're missing a few ingredients right now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It didn't quite, you know, you put, we put it in the oven and it didn't quite turn out the way we thought it was going to. Maybe we also chat about just how, how worried you are in general about him specifically because against the Raiders, he was, he was good. He was good. And so is it, uh, is it a blip? We, we've we been talking a lot about blips. Yeah, we, we talk about blips on here. I think that, um, you know, at this point, we've seen enough here where we don't have to go game by game necessarily. We could just say, what have we seen from him in general? Right. So maybe we talk a little bit about just what's what's going on with Russell Wilson. Uh, how, how easy is it going to be to get this thing turned around? And then, um, you know, obviously this is just a, a huge test coming up, uh, going up against... You know, this might be the best team the Broncos have faced this year. Mm, disagree, but... You think the 49ers are better? Yeah, I do. It's possible, but that Jimmy G team that they played, he was just, like, still working his way back in. Yeah. You know, but they, they uh, the 49ers obviously have the best defense in the league. And they beat the Rams the next week. Yeah, but the, who knows how good the Rams are? It's true. Who knows how, I mean, who knows how good anybody really that's, is? That's a team. I'll tell you what. Yeah, they, that's a uh, good team. They've lost two. Oh, games. Would you say you're all in on the Chargers or not? No. No, you're not all in. No. How in? Half. Half in. in. You're half in. They've been them. a disappointment, I think. Really? Yeah. You're not all in. I mean, they've been beat up too by injuries. They have been. not really. That's their sort fault. of what the Chargers do. That's. We saw the Broncos saw what the Chargers d- did, and they're like, we want to do some of that too. Exactly. They were trying. Yeah. I believe the Broncos are the number one team in payroll on IR. That's true. Yeah. Back check true. Yeah. So they're trying to, the Broncos are trying to charge her. You don't want to, you don't want to do you that. You don't want to do that. No. So we'll get into the matchup a little bit, but mostly talking about Russell Wilson uh, here on this episode. Uh, ben Swanson will offer in some thoughts. Sure. Why not? If we're lucky. Yeah. Uh, Eric, before we dive into our uh, our football conversation here, tell people how they can get involved in the show because the neutral zone this is a this is sort of a communal show. That's right. Anybody can listen. Equal opportunity. And also be a part of it. That's right. So there's there's many ways. One of my favorite ways is that you can call in and you can leave a voicemail at 707 neutral. 
You don't have to talk to anybody. It just rings. There's two beeps. You leave a message. We might play it right here on the air. We like the two beeps. Two beeps. Yeah. Yeah. We call you two beeps Milani. Yeah. We can't really. Beeps are for really, different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't talk about that. No. But that's what we call you. Yep. Uh, you could also leave an email. Maybe you're shy. Maybe, Maybe you a, just want to be a little more calculated in what's it, what you're saying. Maybe you were screaming at the game. You lost your voice. It's true. Mm-hmm. You got to send a little email. Neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. What was it? Neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. Okay, tell me what. Just one more time. Neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. So that's one way. That's one way. You got it. You could tweet at us directly on Twitter. That's the That's the one with the bird app. The bird, yeah. the blue bird. Yeah, the tweet. That's the most yeah. direct way. I mean, that that's like right to that's us. Right to us. The other ways, they go through a filtering system. Once and not to be confused with the birds that you would see kind of as you're you're they hiking through the forest with your axe. No, it's, your it's not the bird legs. identification app, no. Different different birds. Yeah, <laughs> different ones. Yeah. Yeah. You need uh, an app to tell you what the bird is or you just know it? I'm going to get real. I do have an app <laughs> for that. <laughs> But it's often wrong. Do. It's terrible. It's a terrible app. He suggested that as if that was, like, surprising. I know. Anyway. We, we know. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> at Eric Delala with an A. Um, at Phil Milani with a PH. Non-traditional spelling. Naturally. Or you could tweet. We have kind of a network here, Phil. At That's Broncos true. Podcasts what? or Broncos Podcats. Both really good. Podcats a little bit more responsive, I would say. You podcats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that person really engaged. Yeah. Who Who's running that account? I believe it's our friend Zach with a C. Yes. And I think Good we account. might. Are we going to hear from him later in the show? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see. Just stay tuned in, Zach. We'll have to Don't see. Don't fast forward. Yeah. Don't be cheating. But Phil, there's one other way. And that is on the Broncos official YouTube page. That's right. You go to that YouTube page, you leave a comment, and we read all of them. Go right now. We, we read all of them. Just do it right now while you're watching. It's the official Broncos YouTube page. Let us know what you think of Ben Swanson's flannel. Eric, you know, last week. Some good comments. We put it out there and we said, hey, if you want us to change the intro, the, the, when I say, even Swanson was getting upset today when I was like, you're my everything. Yep. Sometimes that upsets some people. You know what I mean? Who do they think they are? Uh, yeah, I am. I am. See, Ben Swanson got upset. And so I was like, okay, if you want us to change it, call in and leave a voicemail and let us know exactly how it's supposed to be. Correct. People people were like, no, keep it. Perfect. It's That's kind good. of confusing. Grant Ledbetter. Don't change the intro. People who have a problem with it are jealous that they aren't Phil's everything. And good point. We saw that. We saw that already in today's Today. show. Yes, we did. Mario Lewis, I want to be Phil's everything. And then Melvin Sanchez says, I agree. I guess they weren't hugged enough as a child. <laughs> and I think that that means the people who the are people upset. Are mad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's sad. You want every child to be hugged the appropriate amount. Melvin Sanchez also, in a different comment, says, Phil, asking the hardcore questions, I appreciate that. Keep up the great work, fellas. I do ask the hard questions. You do. Then you don't, I don't let you it don't, slide. You don't answer. You just put it out there, and then you let me take the, the heat. Yeah, I let you. We put You're it smart. into the spin zone when yeah. you start talking, and then I then I put it back into neutral. Neutral zone. Mm. Armando Vega, yes, new neutral zone. That's the kind of attitude. That's the kind of mentality that I appreciate. Right. Kendall Johnson, quarter zip season is coming up fast. RIP to our Coles cash. Got to get those new. <laughs> Got to get those get new. Yeah. You yeah. spend a lot of time there each week. Yeah. Well, Every it's, afternoon. They're not a sponsor, but. No, I, I just said there. I didn't. I didn't. They said the Coles me. cash. Oh, there you go again. Well, yeah, but then you were, you went back and referred to it. I was just saying quarter zip season is here. Yeah. It's chilly in the morning. It's brisk. Yeah. You know, if you're not prepared, this could be bad. Could be really bad. D.B. King Katsuki. Okay. Do y'all really read the comments? If you do, then let's ride from San Diego. Of course we do. What do you mean? 
Why would we ride from we, San Diego? We read the you ride from Denver. Yeah, I think that um, he's saying he's from San Diego. BB King Katsuki is from San Diego. Got it. Maybe a former Charger. A lot of Broncos. Maybe a fans. former Charger fan that changed allegiances. I was going to say there are a lot of Broncos fans in Southern California. True. I expect a lot of orange come Monday night. Ooh, a lot of orange. And then uh, Avathon just says in all caps, "Notice me, Phil." Noticed. Noticed. You've been not. You've been noticed. That was all the comments. Yeah, that was all of them. Wow. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. I thought <laughs> there was a, a comment th- somewhere about if we even were friends. I uh, may. Well, see, I always go back to last Thursday's show, yeah. and then I pull from that one. But of course, Eric, we also do a show on Monday nights. Yep. That is from Breckenridge Brewery's farm home of ha- farm house. Farm home. Oh, it's a farm home. Okay. Uh, we're there every Monday from 5.30 Mountain Time yep. to about 6.15. Yeah. We're also live on the YouTube page. Maybe there was a comment there about whether or not we're real. Yeah, somebody said that we were like, hold on a second, Eric. I can pull it up. This is good podcasting. Yeah. Nice this work. is some of the best podcasting. If you do want to go to the Breckenridge Brewery show, I would suggest getting there early. It tends to fill the up. seats, you don't. Yeah, you can't just yeah. walk in there. No. Good thing my uh, my volume was down because I just clicked on the YouTube page. Uh, let's see here. Some people don't like the audio on that show, but no, that's this wasn't from this one. Mm, okay. Yeah. But well, we are friends in real life. Of course. Yeah. Maybe that comment got deleted because they were that's, like, this is true. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been. Swanson, he's been uh, that's, monitoring comments. That's not my role. No. Don't blame me. But uh, somebody did ask, hey, are you guys, are you upset at each other? This thing's getting Grumpy. a little bit chippy. Yeah. Maybe that was an email. It could have yeah, been. It could have been an email. We're not. This is just how we are. Right. Yeah. So Should we get into it, Phil? Eric, with that, yeah, let's get into our first topic here, and that is what is the recipe to fix Russell Wilson? Uh, let's go ahead and just hear it. To fix him? Well, maybe to just get him back on track. Yeah, I mean... This is a week to week league. It is. People like to react after each game and it's it's understandable because you go a long time between each game. I think it's worth noting that one week ago before the Colts or we went four days before the Colts game, Russell had a really good game. He had a really good game in Seattle. Um and so it's not like Russell has been terrible the whole season or has been the reason that the Broncos have not found offensive success. I think that the Broncos offense has different people have struggled at different times and and no doubt Russell struggled against the Colts, but I don't want to paint this picture that Russell is broken based on what we've seen the whole season. Cause I don't think that that's accurate. I think that he's shown in several games this year that he's still that, that same guy, certainly in the fourth quarter of games, he's come alive for the most part. I um, think that that's sort of what's the most intriguing part of it is that for three quarters, We're not sure what's going on. And then all of a sudden in the fourth, at least a few times this year, we've seen him come alive. Right. But it's like a werewolf. And when the moon becomes full, he turns into. I just, I don't like, I don't like lazy takes, Phil. And not that this is true. You, but. There is a notion though. I wouldn't you say, Eric, that the Broncos getting this, uh, you know, uh, 11th year vet, nine time pro bowler here. Uh, a guy who's just one and one and one his entire career. I think the expectation was that this offense was going to be insane. Right. No. And I, again, this offense has not been good enough. Everybody has acknowledged that. But what I'm saying is that week one, he threw for 340 yards week four against the Raiders. He was what 11 of 12 in the first half with two touchdowns. I mean, he he's played well in certain games this season. There have been times where the offense has not played well, but I, I don't think it's fair to just say, hey, Russ, you know, the, the easy take, the national take, especially from these national writers who are based in Seattle, is that <laughs> Russell's washed or like Russell's done. And if, if you watch the games, there are certainly offensive issues, but there are, you know, certain games play calling, certain games receivers not doing their job, fumbles. I mean, they Russell certainly deserves some of the blame for what's happened in some of these games, but to just paint it as Russell is not good anymore is not a, it's not accurate. And yeah, it's, and I think that's why our topic of conversation is today just sort of how can we get more of that good Russ all the time? 
You know, how, how do we get that where it, it's a full 60 minutes where we're like, okay, this is the rush that the Broncos were so excited about this off season. This is the rush that earned this new big contract. This is the rush that, that, uh, you know, we were expecting. How, yeah. how do we see that for 60 minutes? And what, what I'm saying is that I think more often than not this year, you've seen what you want from Russell. It's the rest of the offense, the rest of everything that has not gone right. And so to, I guess to see overarching, and you know, people are always going to correlate points, offensive success with what the quarterback's doing. Mm -hmm. And so Russell could be having a great game. And if they're not scoring points, no one's going to be like, Oh, Russell had a great game. It's just, I understand that that's not how it works, but I think that to get the offense going and, and listen again, he had a bad game against the Colts players have bad games. He was dealing with a little bit of an injury. Apparently I would expect him to look, to not look like that against the chargers, but you've got to get some easy throws to get him in a rhythm, whether those are short passes, passes that give receivers a chance to catch and run, um, time your shots down the field. You've got to get the running game going, uh, run more bootlegs, get him out of the pocket. Nathaniel Hackett's talked about simplifying things and really focusing on what, it, what can they do really well and run those plays. So that's all important, but Phil Russ can play as, as good as he can possibly play. And if the offensive line doesn't block and is called for holding calls, if receivers are dropping wide open passes, which we saw happen several times against the Colts, and that's kind of been a pervasive issue throughout the year. I believe the Broncos have the second most drops in the league. Or, you know, if from a running back perspective, you're losing the football, it doesn't matter what Russ does. And so it's, you know, it's easy to sit here and talk about Russ and he's the front facing guy and he puts a lot on his shoulders and gets the credit, gets the blame, but everybody has to be better there. Uh, no doubt that the whole team is, it, it just hasn't looked like a really smooth operation. Uh, and, you know, you hear from Nathaniel Hackett and he says, these are growing pains. These are things that... It, you got work through. And then one thing that he said, he even admitted he sounds like a broken record is, you know, they're just in third and long all the time. Yeah. And so to be able to sustain these drives, it's got to happen first down, second down. I think the one thing though, Eric, from at least from a fan's perspective, it is the last several years, really ever since good Peyton Manning, the thought certainly around the league is that this is a quarterback league. Yep. You know what I mean? And even we heard this week, Ron Rivera, uh, the head coach of the commanders talking about, Hey, you got to have the quarterback. This is a quarterback league. This is the other teams in the division quarterback. Vic Fangio said that last year, you know, Hey quarterback. Uh, I think the thought was, okay, the Broncos haven't had that guy, but the rest of the team, there was talent there. Then this off season, they're like, we got to, if we want to compete, we got to get that quarterback. They went out and made the big trade for Russell Wilson. And everybody just sort of thought, okay, now we've got the quarterback that equals success and it, it just hasn't been that way. Uh, do you think that it's still just a quarterback league, Eric? Like, is it possible if Russell Wilson plays really well, that's all that matters because this is a quarterback league. I think if Russell plays well, you're going to be in every game. Doesn't mean you're going to win every game. I mean, and, and we've seen that the games that Russell has played well, the Broncos have been in those games and despite, you know, a fumble, recovery for a touchdown against the Raiders. Russell played really well in that game, brought him right back. You stay in that game. You weren't but able to. They were in every game this year. Yeah. I mean, they. it's not like well, any of these have been really. But like the, they were in the Colts game despite Russell's performance, just because I don't think the Colts they were are particularly. Good, yeah, correct. Um, but no, yeah, you're going to be in every game. And that's what we talked about before the season is that as long as you have Russell, you're going to be in every game. It doesn't mean that you just automatically win every game. And I think that, you know, and maybe we're guilty of this too. When we were talking about Russ before the season, thinking that, hey, he's just going to magically fix a lot of things or um, things are just going to go from zero to 100 immediately. And, you know, maybe there's players on this team that were the same way that thought, Hey, Russ is going to show up. We're instantly going to win 13 games. And I think that it's been a bit of a reality check for some guys about, oh, I still got to go work my butt off. I still got to get open. I still got to um, catch this pass when it comes to me. I still got to block the guy in front of me. I got to hold on to the football. Like those things are all critical too. And again, if you have that quarterback, I think you're going to be in every game. And that's, you know, Washington, they're not in games. That's, that's kind of the difference is that like, 
and I know that people have pointed to offenses in recent years where the Broncos scored more points to the first five games, but I think without Russ, you could easily be looking at 0-5 or 1-4 right now. And so, you know, the quarterback keeps you in the game, but everybody else has to do their part to help you win it. And look, you look around the league, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers lost this past weekend. Tom Brady, they've struggled a little bit down there in Tampa. You can have a great quarterback and still lose football games. It's not impossible, obviously. But having a guy like Russ keeps you in games. And so, yeah, if he continues to play, if he reverts from the Colts game, goes back to playing at a high level, and everybody else just does a little bit better of a job around him, I do think you can still be a really good football team this year. Yeah, no, I mean, most definitely, especially if it's true that these are just growing pains and that you'll sort of work through some of these struggles. Do do you agree with that assessment, Eric, that these are growing pains? I mean, do you think that sometimes, whether it's the play call and Russell Wilson, they're not meshing perfectly together and then that's going to get better? Or maybe just some of his timing with some of the with some of his weapons? Maybe it's like, you know, I remember on the Sunday night broadcast, there was a play to Jerry Judy it was an option play. Russ thought he was going to cut outside. He just settled on the route, and yep. the, it looked like a, just an errant throw. The plays like that, are, are those things going to get worked out as time goes on here? I mean, I think so. I also think, you know, we talk about Russ cooking and the recipe and all those little, like, allusions to what, to that theme, but there is no, like, step-by-step list of how you do this. And so there are going to be weeks where Russ is good and the wide receivers do not have a great game or Russ doesn't play as well and the offensive line holds up or the passing game is finally going and then the run game doesn't work or the de- you know the offense gets things going and the defense can't get a stop. We saw that against the Raiders. And so we like to, I think fans, and you know we do too, you like to view things as a linear progression and think, okay, you just fix this things get better, but it doesn't necessarily work like that. And so, yeah, I do think there are, in you know, play calling, game management, all that thing, all those things, you fix one thing, you've still got to make sure that everything is, is working together. And, um, the, the, the main thing, Phil, is that you've got to be able to win when you're not perfect. And the Broncos have won a few games, a couple of games this year when they haven't been perfect. I don't think they were perfect against the Texans no, or 49ers, but you can't, you can't lose games you know, you, you got to be perfect enough to still win some comfortable football games. I mean, that would be nice. I don't think it's going to happen this week because this is a good Chargers team. But you'd like, as the season goes on, to have a, at least a couple games where you can just breathe a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I also think that, like, it's been such a struggle these first five weeks that, like, if they can just have a couple of games where things start to click and be like, okay – everybody's on the same page here and it's working well. There's some power and momentum there. I think that that would do wonders for this Broncos offense where you're just like, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is how everybody could just feel a little bit better about it. If you just have one or two of those games where you could just start building on it, where you're like, all right, this is what we're talking about. Kind of uh, just that kind of power, I think would do wonders for this team. And and listen, there are, offenses that in this league that are just stagnant and they don't do anything. They, they truly don't. They go three and out all the time. And I know we saw that against the 49ers, but that was a really good 49ers defense. The Broncos have, I think the second most big plat. I, I don't think I know this. They have the second most big passing plays in the league. They're eighth in big plays. And so they find ways to get chunks, but as Nathaniel Hackett described it, they're feast or famine in terms of an offensive unit right now. You've got to find a way to capitalize on those big plays when you get a throw down the field to, uh, I think Cortland Sutton caught a big one against the Colts. You got to find a or way. Was to, it Montreal? I think no, no. both. Oh yeah, both. Okay, yeah, that's right. You got to find a way to get points. Yeah. You know, when when Keaton Stearns picks off a pass and you're down there and you've got a short field, you got to find a way to get a touchdown. Yeah. And so the Broncos, I think part of the frustrating thing is if you watch an offense that's just terrible and you know there's no hope. And, and Phil, I was thinking about this the other day. There's been times the last few years where we've sat here and we've talked about a team and we've gone into games or a stretch of games, and you just know there's no chance, right? You might be able to upset a team here or upset a team there, but you know this team is not capable of winning 11 or 12 games. I think when you watch the Broncos, at least when I do, and and I see the pieces, I'm like, man, part of the reason it's frustrating is because you can tell that if they can just get out of the mud, they have the chance to be good. They have a chance to win a lot of football games. They just can't get out of their own way 
But I think that's part of why it's frustrating is because you have the quarterback, like you mentioned at the very beginning. You have some of these other talented offensive weapons, even though some guys are hurt now. But they just they can't find a way to get out of their way, and I think that's what makes it a little bit more difficult to watch because there is potential. If there was no hope, you'd be like, whatever. But, yeah. But there's hope, and so you are like, let's figure it out. I, th- and I, I would say, okay, through five weeks here, the way to put Russ in the best position to succeed – I would say are creating some of these easy plays, which I think they've tried to do, but maybe if they could just execute some of these where it's like, these are easy plays. These, this guy should be open in the flat here. This should get us three, four yards. Then, you know, uh, having the offensive line block a little bit better where you're like, you don't feel like he's just under duress all the time. And especially now that there's been reports of him getting this injection in his shoulder, uh, you know, uh, he's definitely been on the injury report. He talked about his shoulder after the game against the Colts. Clearly that thing's not 100%. Blocking for him, allowing him to not feel that pain in his shoulder, maybe get him out of the pocket a little bit, but not necessarily taking shots outside the pocket, but just moving things around, just catering this offense to what he likes to do. uh, And then just building on these plays, maybe some hurry up, maybe just get into a line of scrimmage a little bit or just get in the flow of the game, allowing him to just stay on the field, you know, and just get not just these chunk plays like you mentioned there, but also just like some easy plays where, you, okay, you just had like a 12-play drive and you're feeling good about the rhythm of the game. I think just that's sort of the recipe to me is just having some longer drives where everybody feels like they're involved in the offense, you're getting some easy plays, and you're just feeling better about things where it's not like, okay, we're backed up, we're within our own five-yard line here, uh, the first down run, it's not good, it's not there, second down, maybe take a shot, it's not there, third and ten, oh, now we're punting. You know, that's been all too often what we've seen. Just let's make things a little bit easier. Let's try to execute what's easy and then move down the field. I mean, obviously that's easy to just say that yeah. and obviously, and they've been trying to do the, some of these things, but like, let's just make that a priority where you're like, okay, this is the goal for this game because so many times this year where I was like, well, what was the game plan against these guys? What, what were they really trying to do here? Sometimes it, it just gets so muddled, I guess. Like, like you, they don't really, I mean, we've talked about this a lot too, but like, there's no identity necessarily. Let's just say, okay, this is a game plan and let's go execute this, this specific task. I think that could be helpful for them. You kind of look skeptical. Yeah. I mean, you're like, I'm sure there is a game plan. I know, but it, you you would never know what it is. It's like, okay, like, are we trying to attack them in this area? Are we trying to attack them here? Like, where, like, what what is uh, vulnerable for the defense? And we're really going after that. You wouldn't necessarily know that just based off the way they've played these first five games. What did uh, you say? No, nah, I think there's a different between, difference between, like, intent and what the result is. Like, I think they're... The, the, What's the intent, do you think? To run the football and establish some sort of presence on the ground, which they've tried to do in all these games, and then off of that, take shots down the field. You think they've really tried to establish the running game early in a lot of these games? Yeah. And it just hasn't worked, or what's the problem? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, the Raiders game, for example, the Niners game, they've averaged two or three yards a carry. And so yeah. it's hard when you're then going three and out and you're putting your defense back on the field to to stick with that. But I think that that is the, that's what the, Nathaniel Hackett said, it's said it many times. That's the foundation of this offense is you have to be able to run the football. And so and, what, I guess what's the key to getting them to be able to run it? Like you can't just be like, we want to run it. And then, and then just not be good at that. You know, like how, like, okay, if the foundation of the offense is to run the ball, they need to be good at that. Yeah. You know, and I guess that hasn't necessarily been the case. And obviously now with Javante out, you know, like how are they going to be all of a sudden a really good running team? They got to figure out how to have better execution, whether they mess with the the lineup on the offensive line, which they've said they're going to look at, whether it's having, you know, the, the, another way that you help the run game is connect on more of those shots down the field when you take them so that linebackers have to back up, more play action, have the safeties back up. So you can't stack the box. I mean, that helps the run game too. But I mean, like, 
I, I think what you're talking about, easy plays and, and 12 play drives, that's the result. That's not like. Uh, yeah, of course. That's what I want to see. Right. But so that's let's really set easy. some of these up, though. You know, I mean, like I know that they've tried to like run some screens and it hasn't quite worked or like they tried to mix it up a little bit and it just hasn't. It just seems like I guess I guess execution is just the bottom line is because yeah. when they try to do some of these things, it just doesn't work. Nothing works. <laughs> You know, so I guess that's a problem. It is a problem. They got to figure out a way to have better execution because I, you know, they are running screens. They are running quick passes at times. They have run hurry up. They have taken shots down the field. They've tried a lot of different things. You're right. It just, it hasn't worked and they're still trying to figure out, I guess, how to have more consistency in the execution. And I look at it. I think the Colts game, for example, I think Nathaniel Hackett called a a good game. Yeah, no, I agree. I thought he called a great game. But if, if you're giving up sacks, if you're having holding penalties, if you're dropping passes, you know, if you're not able to get more than a couple yards per carry, I mean, it doesn't matter what you call. You got to, you're not finding the open man, the the player. Yeah. The, the players at some point have to go do it. And so, you know, how does Nathaniel Hackett balance that? Because obviously he can't be like, they just got to play better. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you you can't say that. I mean, you need Russell Wilson, I think to, I think he can talk with Russell enough that, you know, he doesn't say, Russell, you need to play better, but he can help Russell find the open guy, go through certain plays, choose specific route combinations that Russell's comfortable with. Um, Because right now I think teams are are daring the Broncos to beat them deep and do it consistently. And they're going to say, we're going to stop the run. We're going to stop these short passes. Because, you know, it's great to get a, a four-yard gain. And, I, again, I do think the Broncos need more easy more of gains that. To, to on first down. But, you know, if you're throwing it short of the sticks every time, that just brings the defense down further. And then you're, you know, if you want to run the football, that becomes more difficult. And so you do still need this element of stretching the field to, to put the defense on its heels. Um, but... Yeah, at the end of the day, I, I think they just they need better execution from guys, and they need guys to start, you know, playing the way that they're capable of. And I, I think a lot of these guys are capable of doing more. Yeah, I mean that that is sort of an interesting topic, just about like the talent of this team, obviously depleted right now with injuries, and you've got a lot of backups playing in there. But like, you you know, like some of the some of the times, like uh, some of these guys are not in a position where they're like really what they're here to do. For example, Tyree Cleveland, yeah. probably not on the Broncos roster to try and beat Gil- Stephon Gilmore one-on-one on a 15 yard play in the red zone. Do you know what I mean? That's not what he's here to do. Yeah. You know, so I don't think it's necessarily fair to be like, Hey, I mean, if we want to win these games, Tyree Cleveland's just going to have to beat Gilmore on that, you know? So uh, I do think I am sort of interested on your no, thoughts but, but on Jerry Judy was open on that play. Yeah, exactly. So you got to ask Russ to be like, look, we got to on this play, we got to know that he's going to be open here, you know, yeah. or I mean, a, a lot of it is meshing together, but all of a sudden now five games in this Broncos team, maybe not quite as talented as we thought. Well, they've, I mean, their best red zone target got Tim hurt, Patrick heard. got hurt in training camp. Javante going down, obviously is a big loss. Um, uh, we'll see how the Garrett Bowles injury impacts the offensive line. He is a good player. I don't know that he was necessarily playing his best football. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they certainly have taken what well, they've lost, obviously, like you mentioned, more salary to IR than any team in the NFL. So they're dealing with those issues. We thought Albert O was going to be this guy who was going to be a big time red zone target. We thought he was going to, you know, at least catch like five, at least five a game or something. Yeah. That has not materialized. Right. And well, and he's had a couple of drops here in situations where it'd be easy first downs. So I think that's part of it too, is these guys have to realize the receiving core in particular is they have to have Russ's trust. You have to have Russ's trust. And if he's throwing the ball against the Raiders, I think he threw the ball 25 times, something like that. If he's throwing the ball 25 times and he comes to you once and you drop the football, he would never say, I'm not coming back to you. But in a big moment, He's going to say, I'm going to Cortland Sutton. And so I think you saw that on the fourth and one at the end of the game. Hey, I need somebody to make a big play here. He knows generally that if he goes to Cortland Sutton, Cortland's going to catch the football. And so I think he's willing to try to force a throw in there to Cortland to make a big play because he knows he can trust Cortland Sutton. 
And so, yeah, but I, but I don't know that I agree that there's no, you know, I think there's an intended identity for this offense and what they want to do. It hasn't worked out, but that doesn't, I don't think that that means that like they don't know what they're doing in there. You know, I, I think there is, well, I know they've gone away from it too fast. Or you think that, Hey, at some point you gotta be like, look, this isn't working. We got to adjust. I actually think they've stayed with it in a lot of these football games. And that's why you've seen them struggle. And then in the fourth quarter, then I think they kind of go f- away from it. And sometimes they've had success, sometimes not. Uh, but they've got to they've got to find a way to to. I don't think you can play an entire season and just be like, Russ, run around and make plays. Yeah, especially if he's dealing with a beat up shoulder. You got to be able to run the football. You got to be able to get easy plays. You got to be able to throw off play action. You got to be able to operate within the pocket. You don't have to do it every time, but those things are important to do. And can this team do that? Yeah, I think so. I think that they just need to. Again, it. I, I this come this. 10 week, you know, ten they, day. Ten, yeah, she's 10 week. That'd be a really long time. It'd be nice. This 10 day gap here. If the guys used it correctly, I think it's really valuable to just reset because when you get in that game to game week, that game to game flow, it's, it's, it's hard fast. to, it goes fast. It's hard to, I think, evaluate what you're doing well, what you're not really remove yourself from it. I think everyone gets a chance to just step back and say, okay, wh- what really works? What doesn't work? What's not working, but we can, we can make it work. Some and self then, scouting. Yeah, and then just and have a chance to just breathe for a second and say, okay, we're not zero and five, we're two and three. We have to be better. We have to start winning football games. But we've done some good things. We just we have to find a way to do it more consistently. And I still do think Phil that Russell Wilson, when he's at his best, is a quarterback that can just go take over games, puts fear into a, a defensive coordinator. I know the Chargers this week are trying to figure out how do we slow down Russ, and so. To have that, which I don't think the Broncos have had for a long time, is still an advantage. And it's it's something that I think if if you can just get out of your own way again, it feels like and we've said close again and again, so you want to see it, you don't want to keep talking about it, but it, it feels like they have all this potential that Russ can help unlock. And if they can just get out of their own way, then boom, they can take off. And that's you know, you just hope they can find a way to do that soon. Eric, let's move on to that sort of a natural transition here onto like maybe a second topic for this show. And that's just talking about this game, where the Broncos are in their season here. Because if if you do a reset of this team, they're two and three right now, heading into a divisional matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are three and two coming into this game. Does this feel like a little bit of a tipping point for what the season could eventually become like? Because with a win, you're tied with the Chargers. You're both at three and three. Uh, maybe an opportunity to go on a little bit of a, a run maybe before the bye week or something. On the other hand, if you lose this one, now you're at two and four. You've lost two division games. The Chargers are four and two. And all of a sudden, the idea of one, winning the West, or two, getting a wild card spot seems to be drifting away a little bit yeah I mean I I don't want to say that any game in week what is it week six is like a must win football game because you've seen teams come back from not often but you've seen teams find a way to make late season surges and obviously it becomes more difficult based on the Broncos schedule to do that but is it a tipping point I don't know if I'm like quite ready to say that because I think if you get to the buy at four and four, I think that you're still alive in terms of what you want to do. There's so many teams that are jumbled up there in the playoff race, and the Chiefs and the Bills are really the only teams that have created any sort of se- any sort of separation um, in the AFC. So if you get to the buy at four and four, which could include a loss to the Chargers this week, obviously, I still think you're you're alive. Because, you know, it's possible that nine wins gets you in in the AFC the way that things are going. But that said, when you look at the AFC playoff picture and you see teams like, you know, the Browns, the Bengals, the Ravens, you figure one of those teams is probably going to take a a wild card spot. I don't know if the South gets one or not, but like maybe maybe Miami and Indianapolis, one of those teams takes another one. I, I think as you just look around, it becomes evident in my mind at least that maybe the Chargers or the Broncos, one of those teams is going to make the playoffs, probably not both. And so if you're the Broncos, you have to find a way as the season goes on to finish above the Chargers. And so obviously a head-to-head win helps you there. 
You already have a loss to the Colts who are in that playoff race. You have a loss to the Raiders who are one and four right now, but it doesn't hurt, it doesn't help your AFC record. And so the Broncos do have to start winning some of these AFC games against teams that are in that same mix. And over the next couple of weeks, Phil, with the Chargers, the Jets, and the Jaguars, who are all right now kind of in that same mix, you have a chance to earn a couple of wins that help you out in that race. So I'm not ready to – I think this would go a long way because to get to – Again, you mentioned momentum and getting things going. If you win this weekend, I do think you can still get to the bye at, at five and three and, and have and feel good about yourself going into that off week before the final stretch of the season. But I'm I'm also I think as long as you can get to the bye at four and four, you don't feel great because you you probably feel like you have a couple missed opportunities, but you, you still are within range or like within that striking distance that Russ mentioned. So that's just how I view it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay to just be like, this is a crucial game. I I, I agree. I don't know if you want to use the term must, must win here, but I do think that like, if we remove ourselves from this season and just talk about things that we've discussed on this show in previous years, you know, one thing we always say is, Hey, you got to have that leadership and the tough mindedness to not lose three games in a row in the season. Yeah. You know, and good teams don't lose three games in a row, you know, and you've got to be able to bounce back. And, you know, we've talked about these things over and over. You know, I think that if you lose a game like this, all of a sudden it's starting to feel a lot like these previous years, you know, where you're like, gosh, they have talent, but it's not coming together. And it's three losses in a row and it's another division loss. I mean, let's just face it here. The Broncos have a couple of wins against the Chargers over the last couple of years, but for the most part against the division, it has not been pretty for this team and they got to get that turned around. A win this week, I think would go a long way and just confidence and just feeling like, okay, we beat a good team. We went on the road, you know, uh, we we got we rallied together. We believe in each other, and look, here's the result. Because there's only so much that talking and leadership can do. Where if if at the end of the day you're doing everything that's being asked of you, and it's not leading to results, over time it's just a natural for, for any human to just be like, this isn't working, you know. And you and in your mind you start to fade. You know, and so to avoid that, I think a, a win this week would just be huge in terms of confidence, in terms of just knowing, okay, the Chargers heading into the season were supposed to be one of the best teams in the NFL, and we just went into their house and we beat them. We could do this. I, I just think that the Broncos are at that point in this season where the, they need that. Yeah, I mean, I think it just... To... They need that emotional lift, if you ask me. Because emotionally, this team has really gone through the mud here just with the injuries piling up, these these close losses. You saw KJ Hamler banging his helmet on the ground. You know, I, I'm not saying they're losing the locker room or anything like that. I'm just saying it's been an emotional ride these first five weeks, you know, just with, with everything they've dealt with and, and it not exactly looking like maybe how they all had hoped. Because I think if you put yourself on this Broncos offense as a player – you're certainly thinking, okay, gosh, we haven't had that quarterback. Now we're now we do. We're going to take off here. So to avoid that disappointment, the and that feel and the negativity, a win this week would go a long way. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's better to win than lose, but I, I think it's also more about like what do you look like this weekend? If you if the offense finds a way to get out of its own way and it, it becomes clear that they've found something, they've discovered something, and you you go toe to toe with the Chargers and you lose a a 30 to 28 game is I believe that was their score against the Browns. You know, if you lose a, a game like that, where they just make one more play at the end of the football game, I think you leave that game thinking, okay, okay, well, at least we've figured something out offensively. Whereas if you go into this game and you lose by 20 points and the offense still can't get going, th- those are two, the result is the same, but in terms of what you, you know, the belief that you're talking about and what this team thinks they can do, those are two really different results. And so, again, it's all about can you put yourself in position to be to have a chance at the end of the year. And so I think there's a way where, you know, before this season, Phil, we talked about what does a division record need to be. And I think we both said if you could, we, you'd sign up for three and three. 
I believe what we both said. Yeah, initially we said that, yeah. Yeah, and so, and certainly when I went through the schedule, I, I pointed to all three uh, division road games as games that were going to be really difficult to win and probably result in loss. I'm not saying they're going to lose this weekend at all. Like, they have a chance to win here. and yeah. The Chargers, you just don't want to put too much the on Chargers it. Chargers are beat up. I, I just don't think that this is a game where, you know, like like I think if you won this, it would be a, a bonus. This isn't one where before the year I thought hey, you got to have this one, but you do now. You know, after losing to it, the Colts, dropping one in Seattle, you, you're right. You do need to. You do need to find a way to steal one at some point. I just think if you can get to the buy at four and four, regroup, you know. Obviously, yeah. five and three is ideal. You don't want to lose another football game ever, but I just, I don't know that I'm willing to like put a ton of pressure on this game and be like, oh man, we have to. Now, what they have to do is they have to start figuring it out on offense. If again, if they go out and they score ten points, then I think you're like, what is going on here? What What was it that George Payton said this off season where you know they were like, hey, you won this uh, award for the best draft class, and you. You did all these great things, and, you know, he was getting a lot of praise this offseason. And one of the things he liked to say was, what was the Broncos' record last year? It's seven and seven ten. Seven and ten. He was like, thanks, but at the end of the day, I'm a seven and ten GM. Uh-huh. That's something that he c- continually brought. He said that a couple of times this offseason. Uh-huh. I think if the Broncos lose this game, and Nathaniel Hackett was asked this this week, hey, do you think that you guys are better than your record is? And he said yes. But I do think that if you lose this game – you got to look in the mirror and be like, this is a two and four football team, you know, and as good as they, they can be at, at the end of the day, it's a two and four football team. And typically two and four football teams aren't very good, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, I do think that, and George Payton certainly views it that way. His, his he's a, a tough person. You know what I mean? Like mentally, he's just, he keeps things real. And so I think that, yes, you can be like, hey, we're better than this or, you know, maybe we can get to a buy at this or, but like at the end of the day, you'd be two and four versus three and three. I mean, those are drastically different in my mind. I mean, three and three seems way different than two and four. Yeah, it's one whole game. No, I'm just saying it feels way different. Do you agree or no? It's one game. I mean, it's like that. You can look at it just like that. I think that one of the reasons you bring Russell in here to begin with is that he's not, if you're two and four, he's not going to let you waver. And of so course, yeah. I, you know, if, if the Broncos fall to two and four, and again, I think they got a really good chance of winning this football game because yeah. of where the chargers are in their own season. But if you fall to two and four, that doesn't uh, change my opinion of the Broncos ability to go out and win the next two football games and get back to four and four. I think that's, yeah. Part of the, whereas I think some of the quarterbacks that have been here in the past, not that they were like negatively impacting the team, but I don't think that they had that same presence where they're going to stop the rest of the team from, from feeling discouraged. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm more worried about what the team looks like as a, and not, you want to win, obviously, but I'm more worried about what the team looks like if you go and you show hey we can be competitive with a good team a playoff caliber team on the road and we can hang in there and go punch for punch with them that to me is important as important as getting the win Uh, obviously the win would help it would be great and you feel great after that game so what if they what if they beat the chargers like 13 11 13 to 12 like it's a really low scoring game uh, the offense doesn't quite look right, but they got the win. Would you rather have that happen, or would you rather have the offense go out there, have a great day, but they lose? No, I mean, I think at this point you need the win, so you'd rather have the low-scoring win. But uh, but I do think that if it's, if it's 28 to 13 Chargers, you're going to feel much worse about that game leaving it than if it's 30 to 27 Chargers. Yeah. And so... I think there's a way that you can say, because again, Nathaniel Hackett said a lot. We're trying to get ready for December. We're trying to get ready for the the postseason, and so obviously you got to get you got to win enough games to get there. But if you come out of this game being like, we finally figured things out, I think you feel confident about, hey, let's let's win a home game against the Jets. Let's a young quarterback in Zach Wilson. Let's go to the London and beat the Jaguars, and then let's let's really turn things on here down the stretch. 
Uh, I will say, unlike many teams around the NFL, this Broncos team feels like these two statements could be true. This team has struggled to start, but they have the ability to really go on a run and they could really make some noise late in the season if they kind of get this all figured out. Like that can be true. And at the same time, you could also be like, gosh, this team isn't quite as good as I thought they were. Stumbled out of the gates, had some rough period here, and the rest of the season doesn't feel great. I mean, you those two things could be true with this team because – I think if you look at it just on paper, it's not been good. But I think because we cover the team every day, we've seen things in practice. We saw them all through training camp. We're around them all the time. We both feel like, okay, they're going to get this thing turned around eventually. You know, it's not often that quarterbacks on a Hall of Fame trajectory all of a sudden in year 11 just drop off a cliff. Like, that just doesn't happen. So, like, there's a there's a strong belief that, look, it's been hard. We've heard all of the reasons, you know, new head coach, young coaching staff, new city, new weapons, all this stuff. Uh, there's this belief, and I think we both believe it, that eventually they'll get this thing turned around. But at the same time, if you just look at what's – what you've seen in the games and what's happened on paper and you remove the fact that we're around this team every single day, it hasn't been good so far. You know, it just hasn't been good. I mean, they're, they've lost to some teams that they should have beaten. Right. It, I mean, if the I, offensive production hasn't been good. The defense certainly has looked really good. I think in the five games I've watched, I think the Broncos have been the better team in four of them that I, and I've seen on the field like that's as I've watched the game I've thought if the Broncos didn't make mistakes they should have won this football game and which one were they not the 49ers and they won that one yeah so in all three losses you thought that they were the better team that's correct certainly in Seattle I don't think there's any I mean in my mind there's no doubt that the Broncos were the better football team in that game they absolutely shut down the Seahawks in the second half they had two red zone fumbles goal line fumbles but you watch those team play those two teams play. I don't think there's any doubt that the Broncos were the better football team. I feel the same way about the Indianapolis Colts game. I think if you play that game 10 times, the Broncos win nine of them. And then I feel that way, you know, the Raiders, I think is probably the closest in terms of, or I think you could argue that the Raiders are kind of a comparable football team. They obviously just went toe to toe with the chiefs, but I also thought the Broncos in that game, if you don't make the the critical mistakes there in terms of the Melvin Gordon fumble, you should win that game too. And so, I mean, that as I have watched these teams play each other, and that has nothing to do with covering the team. That's just watching them on the field against each other in terms of playmakers, quarterbacks, defenses. But they don't score points. I mean, I mean they, don't, they just haven't been able to score the football. Yeah. You know, so that's part of the critical mistakes is when you have these red zone opportunities. But again, there's a there's a difference between never getting the football to the red zone and not being able to execute on your chances. If you but were better teams, don't make those some of these mistakes. You know, like if you're the better team, you don't make the mistakes. You know, the mistakes are not just one offs; they're reoccurring. Yeah, you know, that's uh, the growing has the growing that. pains that he's talking about. Yeah, but I. I just, I, and we can disagree there, but I believe that. I agree. I, I sort of agree with you. It's just that at some point, I think that uh, I, I guard against this too, where I'm like, look, I'm just around this team a lot where, so I tend to understand that I feel that they're going to get it turned around and that, that eventually the talent will win out. But like, I have to guard against that sometimes when I think in my head, I'm just like, maybe this is who this team is. You know, like I just, but I balance that in my head so much. I mean, I, I'm viewing it from like a statistical standpoint where red zone performance, one score games, lost fumbles, those are all things that are in some ways they like normalize over time. And so the Broncos have forced a bunch of fumbles, I think nine, ten. They've only recovered two or three of them. Like that's something that is random that will normalize over time. You see teams go from six and one – in one score games one season, well, they're most likely going to regress to three yeah. and three the next year. Everything sort of tends to bend toward the red habit. zone performance is the same way where it's supposed to be. If you look at all this data, it's reflective of how teams 
move the ball. And so if you look at the Broncos big plays, their ability to have four red zone trips against the Colts, obviously you have to execute and you have to call the right plays and you still have to do it. But you just, if you look at the history of this league, it shows that if you're able to get the ball down there a decent number of times, you're going to end up scoring touchdowns. And that, that doesn't, yeah, that means you got a good offense. Right. So, you know, if you're able to move the ball, that means your offense is pretty good, which means like if, eventually you'll start scoring. If this points. offense looked like it did against the 49ers every week where you had one red zone trip and you were going three and out 10 times and you were punting 10 times and Corliss Waitman was winning special teams player of the week every week, I think I'd be sitting here and be like, this is a big problem. But this offense has had the ability to go down and, and have four red zone trips against the, the Colts, to have, what, four red zone trips against the Seahawks. And there's just some degree of randomness there where you fumble twice on the goal line you drop a pass in the end zone against the Colts you know you've had against the Texans and a sliver of a toe be out of bounds I mean you still have to go make those plays but there's again and that's why it's frustrating is there's a disconnect here between what you see at times and what you see down there in terms of scoring points And and I just it's not because I'm around the team it's because of my belief that these things will normalize. will normalize is that I think they're going to figure it out there and that it's more likely that, hey, you get down in the red zone and you start scoring touchdowns as opposed to the alternative, which is you just stop getting to the red zone ever and you just start yeah, going. Which to- one's going to normalize? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that's, I mean, it's true. they got to they do it though. I mean. Yeah. I do feel like this is a week where they, it's time. You know, but it's this is a good defense. Of yeah, course, Joey Bosa is it's a good team. Injured. It's a good defense, and but Derwin James is one of the best safeties in in the entire NFL. The Broncos they're they're rested. They've got a chance here. It'd be a really good opportunity to. I, I think part of it too. This team has become. I don't want to say laughing stock, but people are taking shots left and right at this yeah. team. Especially they've been on prime time a lot. Be it would certainly feel great to go out there on Monday Night Football in front of a prime time audience and just say enough talking nonsense about Russ and this team and Nathaniel Hackett and where they are and, and get a big win. So yeah, I do agree that it could be a big boost here. I just, I think that when I looked at this, I don't, I don't like to just change. Like I I looked at the schedule before the year and I'm like, this is, this was always going to be a really hard football game. And so I don't want to put everything on it it in a vacuum. Right, Right. Well, you you don't worry about don't what's want, happened in the first five. Yeah, well, you're yeah, just I've saying all, just this week playing the Chargers. I've always looked at this as a really hard of all football of the game. other stuff. Yeah, so I don't want to put too much on this. It's not a this is not a win or don't get in type game mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, uh, like um, you know, like I I hate to do this, but it just pops into my mind so much. Like Peyton Manning, right? So many people like always were like he can't play in the cold. Like, he can't have good games in the cold. And then he would just go out there and have, like, a huge game. Sort of, I don't know if I can say this, but it's it was like an FU game. I think you can say that. FU, that's what he did. And yeah. he just kind of went out there and did those things. Yeah. That builds the belief. Do you know what I mean? Where, where like, then other guys on the team are like, no, he, he could do anything. And so in order to just build some of that belief, I think that – he, I mean, like Russ, Russ, if he went out there and just killed the Chargers, everybody on this team would just be like, he kinda, that's this guy. He kind of did that against the Raiders, right? Especially in the first half. Yeah, he was looking really good. People spent all the time after the Niners game being like, this offense is terrible. And then he went out and went 11 of 12 for two touchdowns. Yeah. And then in the second half, they didn't Not call so Well, they didn't call a lot of passing plays for him on the, in the third quarter. Obviously, yeah. you have the fumble with Melvin. I mean... Javante's injury kind of deflated. It was close a to a to an FU type performance, and so yeah, I think it's entirely possible. I think one thing we haven't talked about at all, and you know, we've been kind of going on here, but Russ has spent the last ten days hearing how terrible he is. Oh yeah, Russ yeah. has spent the last ten days former teammates taking shots at him. People yeah. on you know ESPN, NFL Network saying the Broncos should have never done this trade. Russell Wilson looks terrible. All this stuff. If we know anything about Russell Wilson, it's that he fuels him. It, yeah, that is gonna. He's probably just maybe like a Thanos situation where like the power is gathering in the rings. Got it. Is that how that works, Swanson? Um, 
Yeah, Swanson. Isn't the rings like you have to collect the rings? Yeah, he's collecting that gives you the, the power. power. He's yeah. collecting the the power. In a while. Yeah, I don't. And so again. I, I think there's a chance that Russ, Russ is just seething about the last ten days. We know he. You, you t- and take away all that, he probably just doesn't like that the last time he played football, he didn't play very well. And so I do think there's a, ch- a really good chance that he goes out Monday night and just kind of silences a bunch of people. And he was really real at the at the podium. Yeah. Really real. Really real. You be, really, you really, be really real. real. Like he was like, this I this is on me. He And he's like, I've I faced adversity before. Uh, I mean, he... That was, I think, a real moment for him. So I agree with you, sort of, Eric, that he, when winners lose, they don't like that. No, because winners, winners win. win. So they don't want to lose. You know, talking about the Thanos, Eric, I, I'm sort of curious. Did you see that uh, th- this new generation doesn't like the thumbs up emoji? Oh, I didn't see. Did it. you see that? Did I you saw see somebody, that, Swanson? I saw somebody tweeted. I, I this. saw it was like a moment on Twitter or something. I saw somebody yeah. just tweeted a thumbs up emoji, and then everyone was like, "Oh snap!" But I didn't really know what yeah. it was about. Yeah, like a, a survey or something said that they don't. People now they don't you, like an easy way to tell that someone's old. They use the thumbs up emoji. Right. I'm you just curi- curious if you use it or not. I don't. Um, I don't. I've never. I don't even know if I've ever sent a thumbs up emoji. I'll thumbs up a text message. Yeah. Like with I don't know reaction. if that's the same thing. I don't know if that's the same thing or not. Yeah. What about a heart emoji? Do you? I do, do that, that a lot. I. I um, crying face or no? I'm big on. Yeah, I'll do that. They don't like that Maybe either. The, they don't. No. What about a sideways crying face, like the tilted one? Maybe they like that one. Yeah, me. There, there was like ten emojis that they were like, "You cannot use these if you're cool." The reaction feature on an iPhone, not a sponsor. Um, it's revolutionized people's lives, I think, because it's a great way where if someone sends you a message and you're like, I don't nice. really want to respond to this. Yeah, but you're just like, yeah, got it. Yeah, Thanks. you just hit a thumbs up, boom, conversation over. It's beautiful. Or like someone sends you a text, you're like, I don't really know how to react to that. You're just like, oh, let me heart that. Boom, heart it. done. Yeah. It, it acknowledges like, look, I've read I've this. I've seen this. Yeah. I, I, I've. Uh, it didn't ignite something in me where I need to re- respond but boom. with another message. Yeah. But I'll just let you know that I saw it. I have, fr- I have friends, Phil, that never use those uh, reactions. Oh, really? And they've told me, oh, you use that way more than anybody I text. And I'm like, no, that's because it's very, like it. very effective. Yeah, yeah, I like it. We have we use it all the time. Swanson, have you pulled up the emoji list here? Yeah, this is from something from actually 2021, so I don't know why this is. No, there was a new, I thought it was a new thing. Yeah, the new thing is based on just something someone saw on Reddit, which is oh. kind of interesting. Uh, Reddit, not a sponsor. You go down a big. Oh, Reddit is also it has to be true. Yeah, and what what were that? What were some of the emojis they don't? Oh, like? This is from the 2021, which was a poll of uh, 2016 to 29 year olds. Number one emoji that makes you look old. Thumbs up. Got it. Number two, red heart. Yep. Number three, the okay hand. Number four, just check mark. Number five, the smiling poo emoji. <laughs> Number six, loudly crying face. Number seven, monkey eye cover. My eight. mom uses that one a lot. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Number eight, clapping hands. Number nine, kiss mark. Number ten, grimacing face. That's what that means. Do you do you think that when Russ? I use the crying laughing, but that's it. When maybe he, I sh- maybe I should say LMAO more. What if, like, Russ is texting with do. Montreal, Washington? Yeah. Do you is. think there's, like, emoji conflicts going on in there or no? Mm, I don't know. K-Jack is like, yo, Kaden, like, you want to grab an ice cream after work or something? Uh-huh. Do, and then do you think Kaden hits him with a thumbs up? Because he's like, oh, maybe K-Jack would understand this. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> do you know? It could be a future K-Jack TV idea. Yeah, what are your favorite emojis? Sort of tells you a lot about a person. They the players like to use the uh, sideways crying laughing emoji. I think on social media. Yeah, mm. yeah, that maybe they're old. Some of them are. Some yeah. of them aren't. Eric, should we play a voicemail today? Yeah. What if we? What if we just play one from Zach? What do you think, Swanson? What do you? There was one from Eddie? Zach, and then there's one from a new caller. Right? I'm not sure if we. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think we should do, Eric? You think we should? I, don't, I haven't listened to these, so let's start out with the one. Uh, this is from Zach with a C. Oh, it's 
back with a C. Man, um, I, I'm just going to let y'all take, take that, uh, I'm let y'all take the analysis of that one and what's coming up next for the team. Um, but my thing is if someone's got a problem with you guys being each other's everything, there's a 30 second skip button in the right side of everybody's phone and they can just click on the YouTube. You can click, you know, put 10 seconds ahead, 10 seconds ahead, 10 seconds and just fast forward. Ain't nothing wrong with being each other's everything. You know what? It's, it's, it's 10 seconds of somebody being uncomfortable because they aren't anybody's everything. You know, they just want to hear that they are somebody's everything, and they're jealous of you and Phil, Eric. They're jealous. So, anyhow, uh, y'all keep being each other's everything, and, you know, I did I did say bucking, bucking Bronco with the B, 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 bucking Bronco, not whatever Google would like to interject me uh, into saying. I was misquoted uh, by the Google. Anyhow. We're going to keep on rolling, country. We're going to keep on rolling. Roll country, nay. All right, Zach, thank you very much for for that. you got to be careful about being misquoted. You do. Of course, last week we played a voicemail. He said bucking Bronco. Yeah. It's dangerous. Google, Google skeptical. That's a dangerous word, Swanson. Yeah, the machines just aren't there yet. Yeah. They don't, it's good. I can't tell. If the machines were there, we would be in trouble. What do you think about skipping the beginning of the show? I don't know how I feel about that. No, I think you should. Re- I think you should listen to it, then hit the back ten seconds, listen to it again, again, at normal speed. Yeah, that's what I do. I don't know. All right, uh, did we have any uh, emails? I don't know if we did. I'm not. This is. I I send them to you so you read them. Oh yeah, this is this one's from Brady Johnson, a new one. Okay, Eric and Phil. First of all, I want to say. You guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. Secondly, the Broncos have got to figure out something with this offense. I understand that it's a first-time head coach, new QB in the same system, but I feel like we went out and got Russell Wilson just for him to continue. Oh, we didn't go out. Yeah, we. Yeah, he, this is not written right. Uh, we didn't go out to get Russell Wilson to just have this same sort of trend at quarterback. Uh, that's been the story since Peyton Manning retired. We talked about this a little bit. They've seen some flashes of greatness, but they can't put it together. What are your thoughts on this? I'd also like to give a shout out to Ben Swanson for putting up with the tomfoolery that goes on in studio. Brady, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Brady. Someone. Either you didn't write it right or I don't know how to read. So Yeah, you got a little angry there. Well, maybe I don't know how to read. So It's possible. That could be also We talked a lot about the offense. Yeah, there is some tomfoolery in the studio that Ben Swanson's got to put up with. That's true. Thank you for the email. How do you feel about the tomfoolery, Swanson? I take deep breaths. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooze, <laughs> Yeah. And then once once I exit this door, it's gone. That's nice. That's good. It's like a different world outside the door. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for the email. Uh, that's neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. That's how you can leave a uh, uh, an email, some well, well thought out, crafted thoughts. <laughs> Eric, the voicemail, 707 neutral. That's right. Two beeps, and then you just fire away. Yep. You do whatever you want. And again, if you think there's a better way for me to introduce Eric, let's have at it. Eric, how else do people get involved in the show? At Eric Delal on Twitter with an A. At Phil Milani with a PH, both non traditional spellings. At Broncos Podcast or Broncos Podcasts, run by Zach or the C. Thank you, Zach, for your dedication. A t shirt still heading your way. Yep. Along with a sticker. Um, or you can leave a comment on the Broncos official YouTube page. Phil, yes. you read them in the dead of night, and then you choose your favorites and you read them. They make me happy. Here on air. Yeah, usually. <laughs> Talk about the hair a little bit. Yep. Talk about just all That's kinds about of it. good things. So, yeah, those are the good ways. Also, you can come out and join us every Monday at Breckenridge Brewery's Farmhouse. Making it a farm. Home. Oh. And, uh, you know, home is really wherever you are, Eric. Yeah, wow. Well, That's how thanks. I feel. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Studio is home. This is the studio home. <laughs> yeah, this place <laughs> is my home. <laughs> <laughs> Any shout-outs, Phil? Oh, I was going to say from 5.30 to 6.00. Oh, sorry. About 6.15. About 6.15. 
Brewery Lane in Santa Fe. Yeah, in Littleton. Yep. Or we're also live on the Broncos YouTube page. Okay, now time Sorry. for shout outs. Do you have any shout outs? Thank you. Are you in a hurry? No. <laughs> uh, shout out maybe to uh, the Colorado Avalanche. What did they They do? raised their oh, yeah, yeah. 2022 Stanley Cup banner. Nice that at least one team that plays in Ball Arena they can. And maybe the Nuggets will raise their first uh, championship banner maybe uh, next year. No, I don't have anything against the Nuggets. I just like to mess with you. I know you do. But uh, that was a really cool moment. It was great. Uh, Gabriel Landesgog, their captain, uh, uh, he's hurt. hurt. But uh, he went out onto the ice, full uniform, and uh, yep. skated with the cup. That was that was pretty cool. Uh, their former teammate who now plays for Chicago yeah, joined Jack them. Jack Johnson was out there. It was cool. He was playing banana pancakes. Yeah. No. That is his name, though. Yeah. And that was a cool moment. Really nice. Yeah. I thought it was great. They played all the small things, and, of course, uh, they stopped the music so everyone could just scream, work sucks. Yeah. That was cool. Blink-182. Yeah. It yeah, was nice. The guy was there. Yeah, Mark Hubbis, I think is. That doesn't sound right. Hubbis. Hubbis. Hop- Hubbis. Oh, that's what I just said. Nice. You said Hubbis. 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 Yeah. Hop a dip. Hop pus. <laughs> Hummus? Yeah. That's his name, right, Swanson? Mark Hoppus. Hoppus. Not That's Hoppus. I, I think I said Hoppus. They just reunited, right? Back check? No. Yeah, I think they've got a new album coming out. All the big oh, things. back together. Yeah, I think they're going on tour. That's pretty cool. Love so what, shout out the, to the Colorado to Yeah. Of course, Liz Geralds. Yeah. Uh, doing some work in the community. Um, I like to. I like to miles for miles. <laughs> yeah, you're just, we're just shout out to miles. Shout right? out to miles, miles. miles. So many miles. So I said you were at one of those, right? I was. It was me and Bradway Chubb and Baron Browning, Will Sherman. And what were they doing? Just so what miles. position does Will Sherman play? And how many miles was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they walked one mile. Uh, Will Sherman. Mile, mile for tackle. miles. You should know because he went to see you, and that's a of shame. course. I, did I say I didn't know? Uh, I, I, never did. uh, I never said that. Yeah. Lies. Also, Christopher Allen was there. Don't want to forget him. That's true. You know Christopher Allen. Of course. Yeah. I was gonna Christopher get... Allen, he went to Alabama, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nailed it. See? Yep. I didn't have to look up anything. I was going to give a shout-out to uh, Reed, who, of oh, course, yeah, of helps course. us out here in the podcast the studio scenes, yeah, every course. week. He, uh, he's the reason this whole thing happened. So if you like it, you can thank him. Yes. And if you don't like it, you can blame him. The, you mean with. the production of it? Correct. I think we can all agree that the audio sounds really nice in here. Really nice. But Reed sits yeah. here and he listens to this every week? Yes, he does. We, uh, I don't think we've given him a shout out before, so I thought that would be nice. That is very nice of you. I'm a considerate guy, Phil. Yes. He's probably like, it's time to wrap up the show. That's true. I got things to go do. Yeah, so, any, literally anything could be better. Yeah. So maybe we should do it. Okay. Oh, should we shout out the new long snapper? Yeah, Phil, hit me with their names. What's the name, Swanson? <laughs> no. Swanson doesn't even know. Yeah. I know. I mean, uh, first of all, Nathaniel Hackett said that uh, Jacob Bobemoyer yep. goes by Bob. Yep. He was like, sure. it was a shame to see Bob go down. Uh-huh. I thought that was funny. And then, of course. We've uh, known this for a while. Yeah, that's not new. That's, I know that, but for Bob, you knew his name was Bob? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Common. Maybe the fans didn't know that, so I'm enlightening them. Okay. What are the? There's actually two long snappers. Swanson, fact check. That's true. Phil, hit but me they, with, hit they me brought with, one. What? Isn't really? there one on the active roster now? No. They're I'm both on the active practice. roster. <laughs> remember, like, remember, like 20 minutes ago, when you were like, I, I cover know. this team every day. I'm like around yeah, it yeah. too much. Yeah. And then you're like, there's, there's a long no snapper. F- you know, it's yeah. just. That's one of those positions that yeah, you There's no long snapper on the active roster. Should not have brought this up. It's yeah. Terrible idea. Well, okay, what are the names, Swans? Have you f- cracked the code? It's Fraboni and Fortunato, the law offices. <laughs> yeah, Mitchell Fraboni. You probably remember him from playing for the uh, so what are the, these Pittsburgh two? Maulers. <laughs> these two are on the practice squad? <coughs> yeah, they're both on the practice squad. Uh, the other guy's Joe Fortunato. Yeah. So what was the first name? He's a celebrity chef. <laughs> Do you think he listens to Neutral Zone? Yeah, he he's on that like uh, that tiny van show. You ever seen that? Nope. Yeah, he was on that. I seen it. Van. I don't know. They live in a van. It. Van life. Oh. oh. Okay. He was on that. Yeah. Oh. Fact check maybe. 
Well, okay, what are the names again? So answer one more time. Joe Fortunato. 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 I think we got some good paisanos here. Okay, that's good for, good for you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and also for me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Mitchell Fraboni. Fraboni. Doesn't it sound like... For, it sound like, Fortunato and have, Fraboni. Have you been in an accident? Call the law offices <laughs> of Fraboni and Fortunato. Yeah. Some can say that they're just an attorney. I can say I'm a doctor and an attorney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And a long snapper. Yeah. Call yeah. the strong arm of Fortunato <laughs> and Fraboni. The long snapping duo that. It does sound like a, you like a law firm. It, is, it does. Yeah, that's it great. Does. Um, so for those who are confused, which I think might count you, <laughs> Phil, the Broncos have two, does. They have two long snappers on their practice squad. They will then elevate one of them just for the game. Who do you think has a, who has a <laughs> nod? <laughs> Who has a, who's a step ahead right now? I'm going to go with uh, Fraboni. I think, Fra- you gotta, I think he's got a massive edge here. Got it. Because, I mean, you cover the team every day. Yeah. So I'm he's one assuming. practice ahead. Yeah, exactly. He was at practice on Tuesday, and Fortunato was not. Why but is he, that? Because they hadn't signed him yet. Makes you think. It does. You got your stopwatch at practice or no? Yeah. He did his snap. It only took 17 seconds. Wow, that's not good. No. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think has the ultimate say here? Maybe like Corliss? Oh, McManus. Oh, yeah. I like uh, hey, but McManus is handling the snap. Corliss or, uh, is not, catching Corliss the snap for the kicks, and then he's also catching the punts. Yeah. So it's like sort of a Corliss situation. Yeah. yeah, but McManus is demonstrative at times. What does that mean, Eric? Do you not know what the word no, means? No, I'm saying what do you what does that mean about McManus, you think that he well, would he's be a like, he's a veteran on this team. He is a captain of the he's special a captain teams. of the special teams. Um, when there was a bad snap against the Raiders, he kind of threw his arms up. Ooh! So he he might want a ball snapped. As, maybe he wants it snapped a certain way for field goals. I don't know. Are there a lot of different ways? I think that, I think that, that really. Uh, that sums it up as I don't know. You think, <laughs> you think about any of this? You think Bob's gonna have a big hand and Bob? Yeah, hit his replacement. Him along. I think he did hurt his hand. Yeah, <laughs> so it's probably, if he's got a cast or something. It probably is a big hand right now. Yeah, uh, you feel bad for Bob. So you you're more of a Fortunato guy. Yeah, because fortune is on his side. Oh, got it. Sort of believe in that kind of thing. Yeah, and Fortunato f- favors the bold. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, I made that joke off. Off show. Oh, I you're didn't hear that. If Sorry. you're not on the record, it really doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> yeah, maybe you toss. Fortunato, to- what's the other one? Maybe thing? you toss missile. Mitch- Fraboni. Maybe Fraboni. yeah, maybe you toss him a Fraboni and just see if he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're finally. It's the end of the show, but we're finally getting started. Yeah. You know, we need this kind Time of energy, for hour right? Two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're already into hour two. All right. Well, uh, we'll be out at Breckenridge Brewery's farm uh, home. Uh, on Tuesday this week. Yeah. Kind of confusing situation. Because Monday Night Football. Because of Monday Night Football. So we'll be there on Tuesday. Yep. We'll be breaking down this game. Can't wait. We'll be talking about how they carried Russ off on his shoulders. How Fraboni did the game-winning shoulders. snap. I mean, you heard Justin <laughs> Tucker last week say it was his first game-winning hold of his career. Never heard about that before. Yeah, maybe his first game-winning snap of uh, Mitchell Fraboni or Joe Fortunato. Yeah. Maybe one In of the, the NFL. Could have done it. What well, was that at the uh, US Rough Riders? No. Where did they go to <laughs> college? Mahler, Pittsburgh Maulers. Uh, Fraboni went to uh, Arizona State, I believe. And oh, wow. Fortunato went to Delaware. Joe, Joe from Flacos. Delaware? Wow. Flacos. Maybe he Elite. has the edge. Elite. Okay. I, I got to get to practice so I can watch yeah. the long snappers. Okay. All right. Well, uh, then it's time to say uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you very much to Reed for making this all possible. And uh, also to Ben Swanson for, oh, thank you. for doing something fact yeah. checking and all that. That's going to do it for us. For Eric Dalla, I am Phil Milani. You've been listening to the, the neutral, neutral zone. zone.